what's going on everyone and welcome back to another great episode of just my opinion reviews guys thank you so much we really really do appreciate it and like always man you see the thumbnail banner background all of that we are talking power book two no book four what am i talking about book four force season two episode six title here there be monsters tommy and diamond expand their coalition by bringing vic and Jannar into cbi Murkovich warns tommy <laughs> against encroaching on serb territory and makes good on his threat with catastrophic results guys we want to let you know that this is going to be a spoiler field recap we're going to spoil it up down left right in and out as if you've already seen it that is your warning and if you love what we have to say hit us up on social media our handles are on the screen lamont's information is in the description box of this video and yeah man i'm not by my lonesome I'm, i got my homie from the east side lamont tyson with get a life games what's good sir what's going on how you doing happy to be here my brother thank you for letting me do these recaps with you and try to entertain the fans but more importantly having the fans know that we love the show and we love to review our favorite things which is tvs and movies already man and you know we had to have our number one cheerleader supporter come through and help us out miss l how you doing ma'am i love the pink i don't know if she can hear me but everybody she, yeah, wave to is. her yes perfect yeah, perfect we, that's adorable we do have a studio audience ladies and gentlemen like yes, they used to have yes. back in the 80s we have a studio audience <laughs> wonderful wonderful but yeah man lamont he is right here on my channel tab on that top row and this is what his swell back channel looks like right here so make sure you subscribe and show him some love lamont episode five was crazy man so many people died man flynn died yeah. walter flynn died also uh polly died it was it was tragic that 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 suck right there and uh doyle doyle brendan doyle mm -hmm. died at the hands of mm -hmm. claudia claudia tried mm. to murder her own brother you know yeah. and it seems like vic has has has, has uh, been put on game you know his, his six senses keep kicking in I really didn't enjoy episode five. How did you feel about episode six? Here are the mon her here there be monsters. What you think, sir? I liked it, man. I enjoyed it. It wasn't it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't as hype for me as episode five, but for me it was still a banging episode. I love the transition they did with bringing in some new characters. I enjoyed the soundtrack. Um, I don't want to say per se it's a score, but I enjoyed the music they had. I enjoyed the setup they're doing with Vic, and I really see the crosshairs coming with Murkovich. I like to call them Mucinex because that's right. the way it looked like when it's spelled right. on paper, <laughs> but it is Murkovich, and I thought this was another banging episode, man. I can't wait to hear what you got to say about certain segments and scenes of the show. Yeah, man, we're gonna have to bring out the notepad too, but we're gonna we're gonna do that in a second. Uh, I do agree with you as far as Vic is concerned. Um, I like where they're going with his character. I, I'm, I'm eager to see how they play us out. But this was a step down for me, man. Um, there was some things in here that was just really annoying. Really, really annoying. One in particular towards the end of the episode. I just This one character just wants to go dark. All out of a sudden, out the blue. It just turned into ah. like the mustache twirling villain. Ah, we're going to take over the world. I'm like, what I, are, I, 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 I know are, what are we dreaming about. right now? I'm like, what? <laughs> He, I, I, was like, I was like, he's still on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, but, exactly. But, 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 <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. Uh, we, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save that one right there. Uh, but I do agree with you uh, as far as Vic is concerned. But one glaring uh, thing that I do want to talk about right now that was really annoying to me is, it's I don't understand. Okay, this book two, book, I keep saying book two, book four, season two, mm -hmm. is better than season one. Uh, yeah. and one thing that I can say across the board is, I mean, nobody in this, and no disrespect to anybody in the show, but the acting is fine in this show. You know, I don't think anybody's going to, you know, get an Emmy or anything, but it, it is good to a degree. However, just every once in a while in power or just any other show, they have one particular actor, one particular entertainer, performer to where he is just not up to par with everybody else. And he had just... St sticking out like a sore thumb and it's just a horrible performance the look on your face do you know who i'm talking about can i guess yes you can guess can, please can, can i guess can I yes guess? yes are you talking about diamond no 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 okay, i'm not talking okay. about diamond diamond okay. is fine 
I have okay. no issue with Diamond. What I have an issue about is uh, the Diamond trying to be stepdaddy. I'm talking about the real daddy, this guy right here. I oh. don't understand what's going on, but his whole story arc was just extremely <laughs> corny to me, extremely cringe. What I know, and look, I know that horrible relationships like this exist in the real world, but this right. whole this whole performance right here was just horrible to me. It was awful. I don't know what happened with the acting. I don't know what happened with the tone. It just was all over the place. And I wanted to fast forward to those things. That that was one of the worst parts of this episode to me. And I wanted to get it out the way. I'm I'm assuming you disagree. Let, let me know how you feel because that that was that was uh awful uh in my opinion. But go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I I, I felt like his acting was fine. I mean what he mm. did wasn't gonna get an Oscar or anything like that. Um, and I guess I guess what I want to know from you is, was it the acting that bothered you or the role that he played that bothered you or both? Uh, well, it was it was both, but it was the acting, the main thing. I just I don't understand the acting in this show is fine across the board from everybody. But he just came out of nowhere. And I'm just like, why, why don't y'all hire him? What happened to the talent? Why don't you get somebody at the same level of talent as everybody else? I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm alone in that. But, you know, uh, uh, y'all let us know what you think in the comment section. But yeah. I, I thought that was horrible, man. It, it was for, really for, bad. For what he was doing, I didn't see a problem with it. Um, be, it's, it's not hard for people to channel their inner a-hole and treat their son because he's a nerd like he's not a man's man. I, I mean, I think a lot of people can channel that type of anger, and that's what he was doing to the kid. But then you learn why the daddy is so much of a space case. It's because he is in space most of the time snorting cocaine. And so I think that his acting was supposed to parallel that of somebody doing drugs, being a little bit spacey, um, very incoherent, not a good decision maker, and definitely not a good role model and father for your child. Uh oh, yeah, I'm muted. I'm muted. Oh. Um, I, I got you, man. Uh, but still, I've seen other people in other movies and television shows be hooked on drugs, and their performance just came through much better than that. That that's just me, man. And um, yeah, I almost forgot, bro. Like, come on now, I've never done the book of sugar before. But really, man, you're going to do this outside in the parking lot? Like, I know this is kind of to the side, and they had them trucks up there, man. But yeah. this was just, uh, this was a bit, this, this was a reach for me, man. What, um, <laughs> what, what, what say you and, and, and Captain Save him coming through? Now, I did like this. I did like Diamond coming through and, and choking him out. I thought this was hilarious. Uh, yeah, what, it was. What, what, what say, what say you, sir? What say you? Well, first of all, dude, you getting high in public. Then you trying to cheat on your woman in public. Like, dude, what the yeah. fuck, man? Yeah. You know it's cameras all over the place. Obviously, you don't care about your woman and child at home. And I just thought this was a malediction for him. And when Diamond came through and put the smack down on his, on his candy ass, I enjoy every minute of it. However, Diamond don't need to be making too many more enemies, you know? And this, is the, this dude is the type of pussy-ass punk that will go home, take out that butt whipping on his woman, uh, which then she's probably going to jump into Diamond's hands and have him do something that he don't need to do to put more heat on the streets. But at the end of the day, when Diamond told him that you need to separate from the boy, from Leon and, and the woman, I was thinking to myself, B. Avery, where are they going to go? Yeah. Where are they going to go? Because they all live in, I'm assuming it's his house. It could be hers. I hope it is. But yeah. the character, his character was just. I don't think it is pure. his. Oh, it's not okay. Good. good, good. I'm, I'm just get if I had to guess. If I, okay. if I had to yeah, guess. I would, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And the scene when Diamond was in the house, and he comes home, yeah. and he run over there and knocks the lemonade out of Diamond's hand. I was like, you little bitch. What what grown ass man runs over there, knock out lemonade, and then go trotting back to the door talking about get out my house. I agree, but I want to know how do you feel about this scene though? Like, how do you feel about? Um, I don't know if you was in his shoes and you come home, and there's a man drinking lemonade at the table, flirting with your wife, talking about you know, hey, you know, you still in you know good shape yourself. How would you feel about that? Well, 
if that situation would have happened here, I would know about it that someone was going to be coming over. But let's okay. just for all scenarios' sake say that I didn't know. I'm not going over to slap out no tea. I'm going to want to know from the wife who's this guy. Uh, and you know, she entered, she said he's been training your son to box. But see, the issue would have been there with me because why wasn't I part of the decision making of where we take our son to get boxing at? You know, but in terms of running over there slapping out some good lemonade, no, fuck that. I'm not slapping out no good lemonade. I'm I'm okay. bulking. <laughs> but okay. I, I would want to know why you didn't tell me that this brother was going to be here. He showed up, don't look like he's the plumber. He showed right. up, don't look like he's the roofer. And you ain't got no grass to be cutting outside. So why is this nigga right. in here? I definitely would not have uh, thrown a temper tantrum and right. uh you know give me the lemonade and slam the door and all of that <laughs> but oh um God. but i definitely would have been upset if my i don't i'm, I'm a, we're, we're gonna assume that they're married i definitely would have felt some type of way if she didn't communicate with me at all and i just walk in my house and there's this yeah. big ass random stranger here that is very inappropriate um mm -hmm. i mean even if he presented himself with good intentions, you, you know, women don't know men like us. He was flirting with her right. five seconds before she came in. Hell, no. that's just not. That's not going to. Uh, that's just. That's just crazy to me. I was. Uh, I was. I was very disappointed with her. Um, and then she's playing dumb gas like, like, oh my god, he's just a trainer, <laughs> like, and he wants to smash. But you know, he didn't know. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, so, me. That's. <laughs> That's real life, dude. It's a of lot of women. It is. It's of a lot of them out there that's and, like and stuck was... with these dudes like him. And for whatever the reason, they don't know how to leave these bums. Like, right, right. They're bums, right. but you can't walk away from them. So what you do is you, you find you somebody good on the side side. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, maybe she was naive, or may maybe she wasn't. You know, but um, I don't know. And then the father was slamming the door in his face. I I, I just had to get that off my chest, man. That was yeah. um. That, that was a bit weird for me. But what worked out for you, man? What's something that you was like, oh, snap. I can't wait to talk to B. Avery about this right here. What, what you got up your sleeve, if anything at all? Oh, number one on my list. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, this episode was directed by Meteor Man himself, Robert Townsend. And I think he did a pretty fine job. And don't Shout forget about him. that, brother. He's still making waves behind the scenes in Hollywood. Shanti was my biggest part of this episode because oh. she went from, man, you're going to be a fan favorite, number one protagonist on this show to by the end of the show, her ass fell right the hell off the map. She's okay. in there. Well, take, take it from the top. Take it from the top, like, okay. uh, you know, the beginning of her arc in this episode. Okay. So, first of all, she knows Jannard is on some higher level of drugs. She right. knows he's getting jacked on either cocaine, uh, excuse me, not cocaine, crack or heroin. She knows that. She's seen right. it. She knows that he's doing I mean, that. Diamond, Diamond and, um, and her had the conversation at the, at the, on the side of the ring. That's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. My and <laughs> even with all that, she's still showing loyalty to this dude, even though he stole her chain. And she knew at that moment when she had the conversation with Diamond, her chain was stolen. And mm -hmm. when Diamond said, we're going to get back to CBI, if you recall last week, B, I said Shanti ain't want to have nothing to do with no Tommy. I said that. But mm -hmm. when she decided that she was going to do it, I was convinced. I was happy. I was like, yeah, we're going to get the family back together. All us black folks and one white dude going to take on Mucinex, um, the, the Mexican cartel. We're going to do it. Then Diamond makes the deal with her for her territories. And he, she would get Jannard back on board. He would get Tommy on board. And when she went, to Jannard's crib after Diamond had been there. Right. She was able to give him kind of a pep rally speech that every man wishes they could get their woman to give him. Not only was she able to get the extra drugs out of him that his own brother couldn't get out of his pocket, she was able to push this man up against the wall, say you acting reckless, you acting like a loser, and you're no loser. You're a king, sounding like Wakanda forever. You're right, a right. king, and I rocks with kings. Pull your shit together. We're going to make this thing happen. In that moment, I was like, damn, that's a ride or die. And then we get to the very end, B. Avery. 
She's twirling. Well, 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 let's let's let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me hold off right there. I'm, I'm, we're gonna, okay. we're gonna, I want to save that one right there because I, okay. I have some okay. some strong words about that right there. But okay. something that you did just say is yeah. that uh, when Diamond did find Jannard, uh on the couch, passed out with the drugs everywhere. Uh, yeah, this he man right does. here has hit right rock bottom. Rock bottom. Rock bottom. And um, I do like the I do like the diamond guy in his face. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It's this is still kind of weird for me. Um, I mean, it's funny to me one for one because I just don't like Jannard. I never have since season one um, or season two. So again, if something happened to him, I, I wouldn't lose any sleep. But this is kind of funny to me. But I do like the I do like the the interaction between them and. Uh, diamond getting in his tail. Just talking about, get your stuff, get your stuff together. I do like that. But mm -hmm. as you're saying, Shanti found him the same way. How you feel about uh, her slapping him around and stuff like that? How did how did she, she slapped him a good three or four times? I Man, how'd you feel about that? Is that I mean, appropriate? You know, you know, you know, I don't believe in nobody hitting nobody. And right. at the end of the day, um, just because there's some uh, some unwritten law that says a man ain't supposed to hit a woman, what could she have said if he would have decked? So I don't I don't believe in nobody hitting nobody. Yeah. I do believe in the pep talk she gave him. Um, and, and that was candid. It was razor sharp. And apparently it was what he needed because it worked as we went on through the episode. Yeah. And so yeah. I thought that that was good. She showed loyalty. She showed that she was a ride or die. And she showed that when someone is really supposed to be your spouse and they see you doing bad, they're supposed to be there to help uplift your spirits, help uplift you out of that moment. And that's exactly what she did. I wouldn't have done it by popping nobody in the face and all that, but apparently right. she know her man. She know what she needed to do to get him motivated and be at work. Yeah, man. Uh, that, that's the thing. Um, th that's the thing. For one, I want to go back. Um, I do like the fact that uh, Diamond and Shanti you know, we're able to come together and just have a brief conversation amongst themselves. Like, hey, something is wrong with your brother. Uh, you yeah. know, he needs some help. Um, and she's like, you know, I know. I, I do like that just, you know, in general, uh, two people that care about somebody just coming together like, hey, you know, we need to do something about uh, this party here because they're tripping. That's cool right there. Uh, and But like you, man, I'm not okay with the slapping in the face. Uh, I kind of want to give her a pass because you know, he was on drugs and it's serious. And she stole was her chain. Him, right, right. Stole her chain. And, you know, he was trying to let her know. I mean, she was trying to let him know, like, hey, you know, baby, I'm here for you. You know, I'm going to help you. I'm not going to leave you. And that's very, very important. Um, you know, a man should always be able to stand on his own, in my opinion. But at the same time, it's nice if you have a nice support system there, support system there that's going to speak some life and truth into you. And so um, that's cool. Right there, I just, I, I just think that you know the point still could have, um, you know, come across, you know, without her uh, slapping the hell out of him. You know what I'm saying? That's just right. Um, you know, I, I was it, just like, man, because <laughs> and, and, and I'm also thinking like, okay, he's he's literally high right now. So right. if he does swing on you, he's gonna knock you out. You know, if if exactly. without one punch is two, then then where you at? You you either your face is broken or you're in the hospital, and we we definitely don't want that. So, uh, the, yeah, the thing with to... him, though, he's not a violent crackhead or heroin addict. He was when she walked in there, he started out talking about how beautiful her lips was. And ladies and gentlemen, she do got some good lips on her. And then it went to he was talking junk about her chain that he stole. How are you right. going to talk junk about somebody chain that you stole to use to get you some drugs? Right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not it's not a good look. Uh, it's nah, not not bro. a good look at all. You know, your not boy's tripping all. here. You know, he yeah. he's, he got the pizza and all that. Just <laughs> it's just just he was a mess. in there getting he was getting faded. Do you, do yeah, you feel yeah. me? Like he was in there getting geeked up. Definitely, definitely getting faded, man. But let's talk about your favorite character right here, man. Oh Lord, you better not say Claudia. Oh yes, yes, oh, Claudia. No. No, she no. opens up the episode right here, standing over the grave of her daddy, who she murdered herself. And uh, it's quite disgusting. Uh, she's trying to put on the act, you know, oh, my God, my daddy died. But she's like, you bitch, that's what you get. I'm just like, damn, like, I don't know, man. You know, pe people do have bad parents sometimes, but 
I don't think it was to the you know point to where she can just scowl over his body like this, you know. And so, um, yeah, man, she's quite evil, man. And um, one of the other things that I was really on the fence about is how this task force, this this police department is going to uh, get involved. I like where they're going with this right here. They uh, mm -hmm. have a lot more purpose, in my opinion. This is the next scene uh, right after Claudia's reveal. Um, how did you feel about that opening, man? Uh, you know, with Vic, you know, being in the in the police chambers and Claudia looking evil over her daddy. Well, first and foremost, if you a man and you had sex with Claudia based on the acting she performed at the opening scene, you don't know whether or not that bitch had an orgasm or not, because that was some hell of fire acting she did. She went from looking like she was a destitute crackhead in the beginning to getting wicked witch on the daddy, getting in his face, evil, angry, mad, and be Avery. I know why she's mad. <laughs> she's carrying the pain of the fact that Ireland will not let a woman, no matter how smart and determined and great of a business mind she is, they will not let them lead anything. And on top of that, she had these feelings in her mind that her dad wouldn't probably leave her nothing in the wheel. Those feelings came to fruition. So I, I thought that in the beginning with her and the way she was acting, um, she was putting on a show. And if you a man and you got in them draws, you don't know whether she came or not. And then with Vic <laughs> and this task force. <laughs> oh, Lord. I've, I've warned you about Stacy B. Avery. I've warned mm -hmm. you about her. And she said something in this task force meeting that made me think twice. I told you I think she's going to wind up being crooked. She told really? Vic to only report to her. She did. She did. There is only one reason you would do that, and that would be because you're willing to do something underhanded that you don't want nobody else to know. And that led to later on in the show, since Stacy wanted to run point on everything Vic do, I feel like her husband, DeFranco, put my black brother to follow Vic to see what's going on. That wasn't something Stacy is aware of. I think that he was being followed by the husband, DeFranco, because he's seeing the wife power trip. That's what I think. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Tommy is being followed by DeFranco. You remember Vic and Tommy had just got back from doing a trip to the north, one of the clubs. Right, and the, and the black, dude and the, the black, black guy was in the yeah. car, and Vic went over that, there. Yeah, I don't think that was under the direction of Stacy, the point guard. That was probably under the direction of DeFranco, the husband. Oh, oh, I see. What you, I thought you were saying he, he was DeFranco. I was like, no, that's the no, black no, guy. no. Okay, okay. No, okay. no, 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 no. And you notice okay. he he didn't have um turtle wax with him that gets out and takes ten years to put a tracker on a car and get fingerprints. She wasn't with him. If that had been something official, I felt like she would have been with him. So that's why okay. I think that what he did was off the books and Stacy Marks doesn't know about it. And she wants to be the point guard on this thing. She wants to be Isaiah Thomas. I got you. Now, uh, Vic, Tommy knew that Vic was going to come approach him and try to do a deal. They're shaking hands yeah. right here. He come to the crib. Yeah. Do you think that Tommy knows that um, he's a, he don't flip or you think he's oblivious about that fact? At this point, Tommy's. I'm oblivious a, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, Tommy's oblivious to the fact, my brother, right now. And what Vic did, I got to give him credit, man. I've called him an idiot. I said him and Jannard need to team up and be the Dalmatians. But he done something smart here. In order to get Tommy to believe him, be on his side, he admitted to Tommy that he killed his daddy. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. by doing that, that ingratiated himself to Tommy that he's still in the game, that he's trying to step up and take over the North. So right now, Tommy, knowing that that happened and, you know, Vic can connect all the dots of how he killed his daddy. Tommy's giving him a little bit of trust, not a lot, but a little bit of trust. And that was enough for Tommy to probably not dig any deeper because they're so happy that the king of the North is dead. Yes, the king of the north of this dead showed up. Well, Diamond showed up, gave him the news. And so uh, that's a wonderful thing. And, you know, that's what got them right here looking at this map right here. And so, right. yeah, man, I, I think I don't think that Tommy knows either. Um, nope. As soon as he finds out, he's going to want to kill Vic, you know, immediately. So do you think Vic is going to make it out this season alive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, be with the, the way they setting Vic up. 
they could really run two more seasons with him being an informant if they wanted to. And not to mention, his sister has established new things. And we'll get there. I ain't going to say, I'm not going to get too fast, but the sister done established something new that's going to be competition. Vic is, he's cool with pretty much Merck. Um, the, he's cool with everybody that's selling drugs in the community because they really hated his daddy. And so I think that they could possibly string out this thing two more seasons if they wanted to with Vic. Will they do that? I don't know. But they put him in a great place and a great setup with a cop who's trying to run for mayor that is about to be crooked. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, interesting. Interesting. Um, so Vic may make it out, but uh, Claudia won't. Um, she probably won't. And I won't mind that at all. I do like the way that Vic is handling it uh, because, you know, we they're going over the wheel right here with the lawyer, with the attorney. We found out that Papa Flynn was like, I'm not leaving you nothing. All of the money is going to Vic and the mansion. And uh, yeah, she she stuck out right here. Um, and that's what she get. My boy Vic is talking about. Yeah, you know, I need the money more than you, Vic. I know these are my reparations for you trying to kill me. Uh, <laughs> I laughed about that right there. I did uh, too. That, that, that's what you get. You know, you you evil scallywag. You evil scallywag. So yeah, that's wow. uh that that's cool for me right there. That's that's cool. Vic, what, what you think? What what you think? What you think? Vic couldn't have gave her fifteen dollars to go get some some clean panty draws since you say she pee pee and don't wipe. Right, right, right. He could, I guess not. And, and it, but in, in all honesty, man, I do feel bad for her to this degree. The dad could have left her a little something because she did try to take care of him with his cancer stuff. She did run his books. She did make things a well-oiled machine for the organization. She shouldn't be asked out not getting nothing. Um, but at the end of the day, you did try to take out your brother. Then you try to act like Doyle has something to do with it. And so right. for that, I don't, I don't, I don't blame the brother for doing what he did. If I'm gonna point the finger, I'm gonna say dad could have left her something. Little something. Do you, do you think maybe he would have or could have left her something or did, but he changed his mind at the very end because they were beefing. They I think he changed his mind. Me. Okay. I think okay. he changed his mind. But the way that lawyer was talking about how the dad was bleeding out money, how That's much true. debt does he have? Like who, that's true. He's got to have some debt somewhere, and now Vic is going to have to assume all the debt. Yeah, yeah, I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Yeah, y'all, let us know what you uh you think, man. Um, you know, is Flynn wrong for what he did? Should he have left her fifteen dollars so she can get some new underwear? Uh, let us know, man. Uh, let us know. Let us know. Um, but yeah, let's let's switch over here real quick. Your girl Mariah. Oh. Is looking happy in the car dealership. She is floating like a butterfly here. Like, is Tommy about to buy me a car? You know, what's what's going on? Um, so <laughs> that, that that's interesting right there. But she gets this call from Kendall, the doctor, right. her her boyfriend. Like, I've been attacked, you know, wrong picture. I've been attacked, and we see him at the hospital with his uh with his hands beaten, and she pretty much knows immediately uh what had happened, and she's not happy about it. And because of that, you know, her brother needs that insulin, man, and she don't want to help him out. You know, she's mm -hmm. going to let him pass out and die. And I, I know you said this is going to be his kryptonite. This is going to come back and bite him later. The mama is getting involved. And I don't know, man, that's kind of cold blooded. What you what you think about all that, man? You think she was justified in doing that or or, or no? How'd you feel? To answer the question, then I'll follow it up in a second. Yes, she was justified. I mean, but I'll get there in a minute. When she was in the car dealership with Tommy, have you not enjoyed these little sexual innuendos and metaphors <laughs> they've been giving to each other? She, yeah. He's talking about, are you going to be able to handle it? She said, well, what if what if it can't handle me? And right. I'm thinking, okay, I'll oh, shoot now. It's about yeah. to go down this episode, and it did. Yeah. And she's running through this car dealership about to lease a car. And B. Avery, why does she go to the ugliest Audi they had in the damn dealership? <laughs> I mean, I'm not one of these people that's, it's an Audi, so it's good. No, fuck that. I've seen ugly Audis. I've seen ugly Lexuses. I've seen ugly Lamborghinis. She mm -hmm. went to the Audi that matched the pants she was wearing. Like, come on, yeah. Maria. Come Let's on, man. And then getting to the scene where her brother need insulin. Now, they made that brother look really, really sick. It looked like his ass lost weight. 
Right. Like he looks sick as hell. His tattoos look like they about to connect with each other on both sides of his arm. That's how bad he's looking. Wow. And he's wow. and we we talked about this last week, B. Avery. We said this could drive her right back to the arms of Kendall, and it could also be a bad situation for her job. We said this on your show. And right. if you're not tuning in to B. Avery's show, you're missing a treat. Be sure to super chat if you missed last week and super chat Thank this you. week so that we ain't got to tell you to do this next week. But anyway, no, she was in every right not to give him that damn insulin. He wanted to talk shit to her and say, um, your, she says that this was her job. You compromised. He's like, no, your job is me. No, nigga, my job is not you. I'm not right. like you. And right. then when she threw, she, she was least nice enough to give him the insulin. The mama grabs her by the arm. I was like, oh, shoot. And the mama like tells that. him, yeah. help him. And Maria says, that is your monster. You help him. And she walked out the door. Bam. Yeah, man. You think there are going to be some repercussions for her? You think Miguel is going to come back and try to, you know, bite her in the butt because, you know, she didn't want to give him an uh, insulin shot? Well, the thing the thing with the insulin is I think that she's the supplier of the insulin. I mean, you would think that a oh, drug dealer you're right. you would think that the drug dealer can get the insulin because he's doing drugs, but just because you're able to get cocaine don't necessarily mean you can get insulin per se. So I think he can't slight her because she's the one providing the insulin, which is what I think is gonna be his Achilles heels if she try if he were to try to do something to Tommy. Yeah, man. Um that's interesting, you know, because she was like, you're going to ruin my career. And she was like, ah, you know, what you do for me is your career. All the other stuff is BS. So you can't um, tell nobody that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't tell yeah. nobody that at all, man. You can't. You can't. You guys let us know what you think about that right there. Um, what you think about JP, man? You know, uh, he's drinking. And um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't want I don't mean to pick on JP, but, uh, you know, this was, you know, he's one of my least favorite characters uh, in the show right now. And uh, his mm -hmm. arc, um, yeah. you know, I, I kind of feel sorry for him. You know, he's like, and my son was taken from me. You know, and then when I got him back, I said I would never do it again. But I let the exact things happen that I said never was going to happen. And, you know, all that. I, I, I don't I don't know. It's just. Um, Kind of a weaker point in the show to me. Not my, not my favorite. What you think about him? I agree with you. Is <clears throat> where are we going with his character? Um, this moment was supposed to be a touching moment, a moment showing that he cares about his mom, a moment showing that he cares about his son. Um, you know, and Tommy had to break it down for him. My mama goes and comes. I've been living with her for so long. Don't even worry about it. But when he said that, I'm thinking to myself, Tommy. Shouldn't that be evidence to you that your mama might be back on drugs again? That's the first thing I thought, because the reason she was in and out of your house when you was growing up is because she was on drugs. And since she's been in Chicago, she hasn't been in and out of the house. But they moved on beyond that. Tom, um, Tommy tried to ease JP's fears about the mom. And then we got more of the story of why JP feels a certain way about sending Darnell away, because he vowed if he could ever get that relationship back. He would stick with it. Now, right. I could see where that would drive some parents into some behavior that they don't normally do. You know, maybe getting drunk, um, maybe going to Krispy Kreme, ordering 10 dozen donuts, eating them all <laughs> at the same damn time. Right. I could see where that would ruin somebody for a little bit. But at the end of the day, you signed off on it. You knew why you had to send them. But furthermore, you know he's not dead. He's going to come back. Your relationship with him is not over. You're just stashing him away for protection. So right. I kind of felt like that was drawn out a little more than what he needed to do. It. I got you, man. I got you. Um, also, man, um, it's been a while since I've been to a strip club. Um, it has been a minute. Uh, but after seeing this scene right here, I was like, damn, I, I may need to take, and I'm, I'm joking. I didn't, I didn't see all of that, but this is a nice scene right here. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I did oh, yeah. like this. Uh, we oh, get yeah. to see, uh, one of Claudia's old friends from boarding school. Um, I don't, I don't know if it was apparent earlier in the season or in season one that she's uh, bisexual, but we find that out. She was just saying, you know, Hey, you know, thank you for coming to see me. Um, you know, I, she's like, I came as soon as your father, I heard your father died and, 
you know, it was so hard to not tell you I had a crush on you back in the day and all of that, man. Uh, but this right here, where I thought was just a random night out on the town, actually turned into, uh, that's the wrong image. Oh, what's that? Well, okay. All these wrong images. It actually turned out into a night on the town that where it was a new uh, business opportunity uh, for them. Um, mm -hmm. We got this new stripper, you know, just saying, you know, hey, what's going on? Where do you get your pills? Or you're a cop? And she's like, hey, I can double uh, everything that you're making right now. And so um, I think I think I think her friend is going to die. And also this new stripper girl right here. Uh, I don't know. These may not be characters that you know, have a large role in the rest of the season. They could be. I I, I think so. Uh, how do you think this is going to play out yourself uh, between them and this new deal that she'd have made at the, at the strip club? Well, first, first of all, I thought it was funny. Um, and I thought everybody knew, because if you guys can recall from last season, um, the girl, she was messing around with the girl that was running around with her that she met at the club last season. So yeah, she's definitely bisexual and she's been bisexual. That's right. That's right. School. She's That's been right. bisexual since boarding school to the point where this girl done gave her a pet name of Cloudy, not Claudia, yeah. Cloudy, because she always make it rain when she put her tongue between them legs. Now, she ain't tell y'all that, but I heard the whole conversation. And so when they brought this girl in, I said to myself, there's no way they're going to leave Claudia just ass out by herself. So they brought this girl to help her out. And the only reason Claudia is being nice to this girl is who she's connected to. This girl's got okay. some connections. Claudia is going to use that because she knows this girl wants her. And when the girl said, go put on your sluttiest outfit, I said, well, you got the right one, baby, because Claudia has got some stuff in there that will make Miley Cyrus cry. Slut City's <laughs> coming out of there. And when they oh, popped God. up in the club, I love I love that outfit they had on when she popped up in the club. Yeah, looking like Goro from Mortal Kombat, the way she wow. had her hair. Yeah, man, I loved the outfit. I thought she was doing it with the ponytail up in the hair and everything. And uh -huh, when I seen okay. when I seen the stripper putting drugs in her friend's mouth, I'm thinking to myself, damn, is this a pharmacy? We at CVS strip club? And yeah. then I knew immediately Claudia was going to try to make her play. And that's what Goro Claudia did. Yeah, man, uh, you're talking about, uh, oh, you you're talking about make, making her play um, sexually against a friend later on? No, no, no. Make her a play to try to get product in the strip club. Okay, okay. And you know what? You may be right there. I did not I did not think about that, um, to be honest with you. Um, as far as you saying that Claudia does not care about her friend, she is just using her for her connections because they were about to make out, and Claudia did stop and say, you know, hey, mm -hmm. I need some time. Uh, you know, can we not rest this? I need patience or something like that. So I don't even right. put that together. Right. So that's that's interesting right, right there. Um, well, well, think yeah. about it, B. She this Brendan Doyle last week said, "I need a quick nut before we do this operation." She right. hopped right on his pogo stick, let him nut in two minutes, looking out the window, thinking how she's gonna take over. Now, that's someone true. that she's supposed, someone she's supposed to have an emotional, romantic relationship with, you ain't letting them get the draws, but you let them take you to the strip club and put on your sluttiest outfit. Mm -hmm. And you don't dress like a slut unless you plan on doing something slutty. And then you come home and all of a sudden, nah, let's take it nice and slow. No, B. Avery. That was a deliberate nice and slow. She's going to drain this woman nice and slow. <laughs> and then she's going to put the kibosh on her. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. The kibosh. I, I, I like kibosh. that. I like that. So no panty draws for you, friend. Uh, sorry about that. She also yeah. tried to put the kibosh on uh, Janar here. Um, this was funny <laughs> to me as well. Uh, yeah, she she tried she tried to drain Janar, but Janar was like, "No, I I remember I I was in this predicament about a, was it yesterday or a week ago? You said yeah. your hands are full. Now my hands mm -hmm. are full. Get out of my face, you you biatch!" Uh, and I laughed my ass off at that. I thought he was going to fold and try to team up with her, but uh, he didn't. Right, you know, right. So. I, I like that. She had to go begging the Serbs for protection. And matter of fact, I didn't even, I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, Vince took the bodyguards away. This is funny to me. Yeah. This is funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is hilarious. I, I, I like that a lot, man. I, I do. But I can do. you blame them? Can you blame them? No, 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 no. Uh, I can't blame them at all, man. 
I, I really can't. Uh, I know we was talking about Shanti earlier. Uh, she got him mm -hmm. cleaned up, and we got the reunion right here between Vic Diamond and not Vic Diamond, Diamond Gennard and Tommy here. Um, I do, I, I like that a lot. Um, it was funny to me. We, we also see that, not funny, that's not the right word I want to use, but, and we're going to, man, well, do I want to save that? Well, no. Shanti was like, hey, if you let Gennard get back into CBI, I'll give you these uh, extra territories. And right. Tommy was like, oh, you should have lived with that. I, I like how they was all able to work it out. And, you know, they, they made a deal right here. So that's that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. But um, something that I did not something that I did not see coming. Um, Lamont mm -hmm. is earlier in the episode where Diamond tried to pay off uh, Janar's debt and yeah. Markovich wasn't having it. You know, he was like, this don't even cover the interest right here. Damn. And Diamond was like, OK, you know, we're going to have to work this out. Tommy tries to go and talk to Murkovich as well, but it doesn't work. Murkovich called this man a pirate. I don't mm -hmm. trust you. You don't respect boundaries. And Tommy got a little too big for his britches here, man, and kind of walked out of there with an attitude. And uh, the repercussions of that, man, is uh, Murkovich. <laughs> Came and shot up the club, man. Shot up the neighborhood, man. Shot up the block. This was awful. They had bazookas and grenade launchers and automatic weapons and assault rifles. Look at this. Look at this, man. This is World War Three in the hood, man. And I did not like it, Lamont. What was going through your head when you were seeing all this? I swear this dude looked like Kevin Hart to me a little bit. He do. He, uh, he do. He do. He's gonna use our boy as a human shield. That I'm like, bro, ain't no way them headphones that good to where you couldn't hear what was going on. But yeah, man, this is awful, man. This broke my heart, bro. What how did how did you feel when all this was going down? Man, and do you think do you think this is Tommy's fault as well? Uh, how, how you feel? It was so much going through my head when them when them guys rolled up and they escalate, shoot. Like, damn, y'all think y'all going to war with Ukraine or Russia or some shit? And then I'm sitting out here complaining that Mucinex wants that block so badly. B. Avery, that looks like two buildings. You mean to tell me the whole project this whole fight is about is two fucking buildings? I was like, come on, man. And Smurf, you dead wrong for pulling the dude with the headphones in front of you. And yeah. I was happy your ass still got shot. I yeah. was happy because that was it was wrong for you to pull Lil Wayne in front of you with his headphones on. That was just dead wrong. And then yeah. these guys brought rocket launchers and grenades. I get you trying to send a message, but the hood y'all trying to re retake looks to be very small. Now, for all I know, it's a whole lot of people in them hoods with a lot of money. But for that one tiny ass block, you got to go to war like you fight in Russia. I thought it was overkill. And I think that <laughs> all you did... All you did was make Tommy mad because Tommy, <laughs> Tommy the man now. Tommy got soldiers out of here on these streets. Yeah. He's gonna want revenge for Smurf. He don't like Mucinex in the first place. And for y'all to come out here with heavy artillery like that and blowing up and bombing two blocks in the hood, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy even came and seen it his with his own two damn eyes. So yeah, I think Mer yeah. I think Merkovich just signed his death warrant. Yeah, man. And uh, while Tommy was out there, is this a text message right here? Yeah, he talking. This is yep. what's going to. What this is what the north side will look like if you step foot uh, over there. And so, um, Murkovich, Murkovich, what are you doing, man? You know, you you starting the war here. Uh, and so, hopefully, you can uh, you can back it up. Now, um, even before that, before I go on on that point right there, I just want to. Um, give a shout out to all my young fellas out there. Uh, do not do this. Do not pop up at some woman's job Hell like no. this, in my opinion, if she's just not returning your phone calls. Um, yeah, I know you may want to, uh, but this is just not a good idea, in my opinion. Lamont, how do you yeah. feel about that? What say you, sir? What say you? Well, if a woman traditional science would say if a woman is ignoring you you're supposed to let it go and move on um but if you I, I guess if in your heart you feel like it's love and you need an explanation because in tommy's situation they had just had a good time 
there was no reason for her to be distant. And, you know, we could always pull out the good old excuse, P. Avery, maybe something bad happened to her. Maybe she got abducted. Maybe she was dead. Um, so I would say tread lightly, fellas, if you're going to pop up on somebody's job. Make sure the situation is one where you cool with that person and y'all vibing like that. But under mm -hmm. normal circumstances, don't pop up to the job. You'd be better off popping up to the house because at least at the house, you only got to contend with her versus you go to the job and they be tripping. It was policemen. It was police yeah, officers a in that hospital. Yeah, yeah, you get a case, anything like that. So if, yeah. or better yet, if you know where they like to hang out in public, try to meet them somewhere in public, you know, um, so that there's no trouble. Yeah, that that's a better option, but I still don't uh, recommend that. But I just had to throw it out there. When Tommy was doing it, I was like, no, my brother, what are you doing? You know. He's but in love. He's in love. I, he He's in lust. He don't love this woman, you know, but he, he, that's, he ain't that's even just hit me. it yet. Yeah, he hasn't even hit it at this point. Um, you know, but uh, the co-worker wants to know about it, but you know, it's being interrupted by the mayhem that just went down, and we got Kevin Hart brother here um that's passed out and so um that's where uh she cares about him all of a sudden you know and wants to go find him you know i'm telling her not to do it but she goes so, and does it as well did you buy the excuse of why she was ignoring him no <laughs> me neither that was kind of whack uh yeah to be honest with you so yeah I, I, i'm gonna get there that, that, that was kind of whack um but uh this is funny to me um, okay. she's cussing his ass out saying, where's right. Tommy? I don't give a damn about your sister. You know, I did get a, <laughs> a little laugh. I, I did get a little laugh out of that. Uh, but just like you were just uh, saying, man, uh, here's Tommy right here, man, at the crib. Uh, after yep. he visited the neighborhood and saw all the aftermath of the neighborhood getting blown up and mm -hmm. she pops up and we just said that we didn't really buy her, uh, her alibi, man. Uh, you know, but what we did buy is uh, the panty drawers uh, that came off uh, mm -hmm. right here, and they, they got it in. So I was wrong as well. I think on the no if you want to pull out the notebook, sir, I think I said episode seven. Is that true? Did I say episode seven that they was going to get it on? Get it in? Nope. What did I say? Six. Oh, snap. I wasn't being funny either. I wasn't being. Okay, yes. Yes, episode. So you you got to give me all of your subscribers now. That's the part. No, I'm joking. That's <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you follow me and you haven't subscribed to this man's channel, what are you waiting on? Go subscribe and bring a super chat with you. Puts out great content. Just fellas, don't watch this with your women because his voice is the panty oh, dropper. Lord, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! But no, Tommy was Tommy was the panty dropper here, man. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that they had sex, but it was um. I, I don't know. I kind of wanted it to pop off a little bit better than this. You know, she coming yeah. over all distraught. Oh, my God. I thought you was dead. I'm not dead. I'm here. I'm alive. And then they just end up having sex. Um, it it, it would have, you know, it would have, I would have liked it better if they had sex. I think in episode four or five, when she had the yellow dress on and uh, the one, they had yeah. the, the pacos yeah. and stuff like that. Uh -huh. That was a, that was a better scene uh, for it to pop off for me. I don't know, man. What, what you say to you, man? We've been wanting this to happen for so long. It finally did. What you got? What you got? Well, he slid up. He slid. He slid his meat and hot taco. Um, <laughs> okay. But um, I, I think that because he's such an established actor, a lot of established actors don't do like these major love scenes no more where they show their body. And it's very intimate and you see sweat bees and you see butt cheeks. He's not going to do that anymore. So <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't have minded they would have done that for Maria. But I think at this stage in his career, that's about the best you're going to see from him and anyone that's a love interest with him. I'm, I'm, I'm more so interested in where they're going to go with the story when the brother finds out, Miguel, that she's dating him and i don't know if we're going to get that this season it could be a cliffhanger for the finale or something yeah i got you man you know it it, it happened I, I i'm glad it happened uh but you know whatever it, it could have happened better he's in love now he yeah. said he's in love i guess you know. and then you, there was something else we all predicted holly came back holly was yeah. someone he got pregnant and killed and found out that she was pregnant 
And she came back and was basically the uh, ghost of Christmas Holly saying, look, this woman, it's not going to work for you, Tommy. Tommy got on his knees, was rubbing the belly, begging Holly. And I was just thinking to myself, hmm, are they trying to tell us that this is going to be about two good seasons and then Maria is going to turn on Tommy? Or maybe Maria decided to get in the business with Tommy. B. Avery, where do you think they're going to go with this story? And what was this Holly metaphor a showing of? I have no idea, my guy. Uh, this came this came out of nowhere for me, this, this Holly thing. Um, she was never a favorite character of mine either. Um, okay. I mean, I like Kate, the mother, more than her. But um, I don't know, man. Um, I guess his... I mean, his demons are coming back to to fight him, but I just wonder why, because that's just so random. You know, like, I, when I saw Holly pop up, I wasn't like, oh, snap, that's Holly right there. I, we all remember her. It, it wasn't like that for me. It was just like, what are you doing here? Out of all the people, you pop up? Like, man, so I don't know. It, it could be a know. metaphor that, you remember I said, do you, I, was, you was on the live with me this weekend, right? Yeah. Do you remember me saying what's going to happen if Tommy gets Maria pregnant? I really don't, man. I'm sorry. What, what did you say? I basically said, highlighted that there's a chance Tommy could get Maria pregnant. Maria seems like she'd be a good mother to a child. And if I'm putting money on the metaphor of them mm. showing Holly pop up, I'm going to think that's a metaphor that Maria is about to be early pregnant and there's going to be some consequences that's going to happen from her being pregnant. Because number one, they showed the mama, and we know the mama does not like white guys. One bit. So how do you think the mama is going to tolerate knowing that her daughter is pregnant by a cornbread white guy? Um, I think that the mom, you're talking about Kate, right? No, not Kate. I'm talking about Maria's mother. Oh, Maria's mother. Um, Oh, yeah, she's going to raise hell. She's not going to like that at all. She's going to throw yeah, all types right. of fits. She's going to grab her on uh, her other arm uh, like she grabbed her earlier. I'm like, what is wrong with you? She's going to grab on one arm and be slapping another. You know, I was going to say, Kato embrace the hell out of her. You know, no, Kate um, going to love it. Yeah, yeah, Kato yeah. Love but it, yeah. I, the other mother. Yeah, she she's not going to like that, man. How did you feel about Vic, you know, uh, talking to himself like we did it glow? You know, I love you. And I got the, you know, and I took out my daddy and, you know, he reminiscing and, you know, she he looking at the pictures and and all that right there, man. Um, you know, you you care about Vic. You know, you feel sorry for Vic at all or you like, nah, man, that's that, what you get. That shit was corny as fuck, man. I mean, look, dude, w once you go black, you never go back. But how are you doing anything to save her legacy? You really yeah. you really think that these police is about to give you full immunity? You can't even go take a dump without their permission. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like, and you better not try to hide the remnants of that dump somewhere else for them to think that you're up to something. So, no, I think that he's on an illusion. He's in a bad place. And all that reminiscing over Glow, he probably need to find him another good woman that can help him navigate this, this murky water he's in. And I don't know what good sisters is left that would date Vic. I got you, man. Um, you use the word. That's that's funny, though. You use the word illusion, my friend. Yeah. What I thought was an illusion was this whole thing right here with Shanti at the end. This is what I was talking oh. about at the very beginning, bro. Lamont, yeah. what was this, bro? This was ridiculous. I swear I thought Jannar was either dreaming or I thought he was on drugs still, and he was imagining her saying all this, like, we can't let this white boy come in here and take over. Who does she think he is? These motherfuckers? This was the worst <laughs> scene, the most corniest scene, the most cringiest. And I like Shanti. I have liked Shanti all season. Both she has been a great character. She has been a great yes. woman. I talked 100%. about earlier how wonderful it is to see her getting and Janar shit and be like, hey, man, you're a king. You need to mm -hmm. be on it. Clean yourself up. I believe in you. I got your back. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is a good woman, good character, all this. But all of a, all of a sudden, they want to turn her into Satan over here and like, yes, we're going to take over the world in phase three of world domination. Yeah. Where was this? And then this the look, go, go back to that last one. Not this one, the one just before that. Look at the lighting and how they highlighted 
his face coming out of the darkness and her stepping into the light. I, I seen what y'all did with that camera crew. I seen it and I like it. Lamont, I, I thought this is the worst thing ever, man. Um, it, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. Out of nowhere, it, everything about it was bad. Even Janora was confused. He was like, what? what are you talking about? Like, you know, right. how did you feel, man? You agree or disagree? I disagree to one. I disagree oh, because man. I, I made a point earlier in the season to say that they could take Janard and Shanti and take Shanti's character and make her the new Tasha. The only problem is they're going to make her the new Tasha via the antagonist way, not the protagonist way. And up until that scene, I think that she had just become a power legend by giving her man that pep talk saying, you a king, you my king, I only deal with kings, basically what she sold. And then we get here, now she's making the power play that, you know what, I got the balls in the relationship, and she even called him the pussy. <laughs> Yeah, she said, <laughs> step that you, pussy up. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what she said. And so, and he all of a sudden going to beat his chest out. Yeah, that's right, what she said. And so I think they end way over their head. Shanti is not being smart because she's dealing with a junkie. A this man who in the same day just took your chain, sold it for drugs, and then when you came to reclaim it, he talked shit about it. Right. Talk junk about it. And so this what you horrible. think you about to conquer? What you think you about to conquer with him? You ain't got the Dora Milaje on your team. This ain't Wakanda forever. You about to get them pretty lips chopped off of you dealing with Jannard, thinking that he's going to be able to follow through on a good plan. But I do believe Jannard needs leadership, and apparently she ready to lead, so let's see how much trouble she get into. I mean, I guess you got a point there at the end. I would rather Jannard, but then that was awful, bro. I was just like, what is this happening right now? This is a horrible character art, but I don't know. I feel this way. You disagree. You know, that's the name of the channel, just in my opinion. We have different ones, and it's all good, but I don't know, man. Is there is there anything else with, uh, that we haven't talked about What you want to get off your no, chest? No, I, th I think me. we hit them up, down, left, and right. Um Pop them in the mouth any which way we can go. Yeah. Um, you know, we just got to see what happens, man. This thing is moving pretty fast. B. A. is going to be over with literally in four more weeks. Four more weeks, one more month. So, yeah, guys, there you go. Let us know what you think. That is our recap. That is our review for Power Book Four for Season Two, Episode Six, titled Here There Be Monsters. Guys, we will be here again, same time, same place next week for episode seven. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can join the party. Lamont, my guest, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, man, and helping your boy out. Why don't you let the good people know what you got going on on your channel that they can look forward to? Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, men, old women, and old fellas, I will be going live. To recap then this episode of power saturday night 8 p.m eastern come check us out spend some time with us if you can i'll be dropping my power episode seven trailer breakdown probably saturday during the day maybe sunday morning i don't know and i'm going to also try to sneak in here and review new show on peacock nbc called found starring my girl shinola i forgot her last name but she was the black girl in shameless phenomenal actress built like a superhero, can act her butt off. I'm happy to see her be a lead in a show like that. It also has Mark Paul Glacier, who was um, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. And for those that watch P-Valley, the young lady that played Azaria, she's also in the show too. Be sure to tune in to catch those reviews, man. It's, I think it's going to be a good show and I want to break it down for you. Be you on mute, my brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. Subscribe to his channel. He's on my channel tab right there. That's that's what it looks like. And uh, also subscribe here again if this is your first time here. I got a lot of Loki videos up, and you'll get all this hot jazz right there as well if you subscribe. But more specific, my Loki Season 2 non-spoilery review for Episodes 1 through 4. Check it out. Check out my reaction as well. Check out my review for Saul and the latest episode of Super Duper, where we just talk about mm. comic book superhero stuff.
But guys, that is again, a beautiful thumbnail. My God, oh, that thank, was thank you, thank you. I appreciate thumbnail. it. I, I made it myself. I made it myself. He needs uh, a super but, chat for that, ladies and gentlemen, because that took time. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that I'm B. Avery. That's Lamont, and that's just our opinion. Peace out, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>